What's up guys? Welcome to Real Chemistry. I don't usually say what's up, but I guess I'm changing it up today. Today we're also going to be changing it up by looking at a pretty hard, pretty challenging equilibrium calculation. We're going to be using what's called an ICE table. ICE stands for initial, that's the I, that's the initial concentration of our reactants. C, that stands for change, which is the change in concentration of our reactants. And E stands for equation, that's the equation that represents this change. What are we doing here? Why are we using these ice tables? Well, the idea is you've been given some reactants, and you went into the lab and you ran a reaction, and you let it run till equilibrium. And the question we're trying to answer is, what are those concentrations when the reaction stops, when it's at completion? So we know our initial concentrations, and we want to know our final equilibrium concentrations, and that's where the ice table comes in handy. So if you look at this problem down here, it says under certain conditions, the equilibrium constant for the decomposition of PCl5 into PCl3 and Cl2 is 0.0211. What are the equilibrium concentrations of these guys if the initial concentration of PCl5 was one molar? So notice there we've just been given what we started with. We started with one mole per liter of phosphorus tetrachloride. I'm sorry, phosphorus pentachloride. And what we want to know is what's going to happen at equilibrium. And we have the equilibrium constant. So we have all the information we need to do that. But it is algebraically somewhat challenging. So we're going to go step by step through this algebra. And if it feels challenging, that's because this is one of the more difficult problems that you do in general chemistry. So let's fill out our ice table here. That's what this guy is. Notice it says initial change equation. And the reason we're doing that is that eventually we're going to want to plug our equations, that's what we get out of our ice table, into our equilibrium constant. So let's write that equilibrium constant in terms of our variables first. Notice that we're still going to have our product up top, which is PCL3 and Cl2. And then on the bottom, we have PCL5. And notice we don't, unlike in some simpler versions of these calculations, have all the variables we need. We have three unknowns. Each of those concentrations at equilibrium, we don't, we don't know any of them. And so that's why we need this ice table. We're going to come up with equations that will help us solve this. All right, so initial, the first row in our column, means the initial concentration that we're at. And well, we know that our PCL5 starts at one molar, so we're going to put in one molar there. And then our PCL3 and CL2, at the beginning of the reaction, there's none of them. So the initial concentration of those guys is zero. And now we're going to look at the change. Well, we don't know what that change is. It's going to change in concentration, and we know PCL5 is going to drop in concentration. It's the reactant. It's running forward to the products. And so we're just going to put minus X. So what that's saying, then, is that PCL5 drops by some variable, X. We don't know what it is. PCL3, notice, is going to actually increase by X. The reason is, right, is there's a 1 in front of PCL5, a 1 in front of PCL3, and a 1 in front of CL2. And that means that for every mole my PCL5 drops, I'm going to make one mole of PCL3. And so that means that what's going to happen to my PCL3 is I'm going to gain X. And my CL2, well, that's going to be the same because if I lose one PCL5, I gain one CL2. Importantly, if the numbers in front of this equation are different, like say that's a 2 there, well, that would mean I would gain two CL2s for every one PCL5 I lost, and I would put a plus 2X there. So the number that we put next to our x down there is determined by our coefficients in our equation. In this case, since they're all 1, we have minus x, plus x, and x. So that's our change. And then what's our equation? Well, for PCL5, I know that my concentration is going to be equal to 1 minus x. For CL3, my con PCL3, my concentration is just going to be x, whatever I gain. And my concentration for CL2, also going to be x. So those equations, notice now, are all in terms of one variable x. And that's really important because that's going to make this an algebraically solvable system. We're going to take those equations now and we're going to plug them down here. So what do I plug in for PCL3? I plug in x because that's the equation for it. I'm going to end up with x, which is however much I lost for my PCL5 and however much I gained for my PCL3 and CL2. What am I going to put in for my CL2? Also x. And then what am I going to put in for PCL5? 1 minus x. So that's going to give me x squared over 1 minus x. And that's all going to be equal to my equilibrium constant, which it tells me up here is 0 0.0211. So, oops, sorry, not quite the right equilibrium constant, 0 0.0211.
So I've run out of space already, so you can see that this is going to be uh, a couple pages of algebra here. But let's go ahead and write that a little more nicely. This is where we've ended up from our ice table. So the whole goal of the ice table was to get everything in terms of one variable, x, and now I can solve it. But you can see that this algebra equation is not a super straightforward one to solve. We're going to have to do a fair amount of algebra to get there, and eventually we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So notice we're on step four, which is solve for x. The first goal we have is to set this guy equal to zero and then to use the quadratic equation. That's this guy down here, which you may have used uh, back in Algebra 2, or possibly not, but we'll show you how to use it. All right, first let's multiply both sides by 1 minus x. And that's generally going to be your first step. You're going to multiply by whatever is on the bottom there. And so I'm going to get 1 minus x times 0 0.0211 is equal to x squared. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 1 by that, and I'm going to multiply x by that. And so that's going to give me 0 0.0211, that's 1 times that, minus 0 0.0211x equals x squared. So now I have something that uh, you may be familiar with called a quadratic. It's a polynomial with an x squared. And I want to set it equal to 0, so I'm going to do that just by taking what's on the left and putting it on the right. So first I'm going to subtract 0 0.0211, and then I'm going to add 0 0.0211x to both sides. So what that's going to give me then is 0 on the left-hand side, and x squared minus, I'm sorry, plus 0 0.0211x minus 0 0.0211. So now I have a quadratic set equal to 0, and that was my first goal to get zero on one side of my equation. The reason I'm doing that is because that's what the quadratic equation tells me about. If I have a formula in terms of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then I can use my quadratic equation, which is this guy down here. All right, let's do that. Well, whatever is next to my x squared is a. So not whatever comes first, but whatever is next to my x squared. And if you see here, I have a one in front of my x squared. Whatever comes in front of my x is a b, and whatever has no x on it is c. And I'm going to plug that into this equation in terms of those variables. So x is equal to, then, negative b. So notice b is this guy. a is going to be the 1 up there, and that's going to be c. And c is negative, you'll notice. So I'm going to put in negative b, which is negative 0. 0, 2, 1, 1. And then there's this plus slash minus. And what that means is I'm going to run the equation once to get what's called a positive root, the positive uh, time. I'll get one value for x. And then I'm going to subtract instead of adding, and that's going to give me a second value for x. So I'm going to get two values of x out of this equation. And I'll talk about how we can pick between those. So negative b plus or minus square root. And then it's b squared, which is 0 0.0211 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is negative 0 0.0211. And that's all divided by 2a, which is 1 in this case. So notice I've just copied this equation down here. I've done negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And now we'll solve for our two different values of x. And First of all, we'll say, okay, let's just resolve what's under that square root, because it looks kind of ugly. And when we do that, we'll get 0 0.0848 over 2. And now we can go ahead and solve for our positive and negative roots. That's right, I have two pages of algebra. I'm sorry. So we'll solve for a negative and positive root. First, what we're going to do is we're going to do this math equation, and we're going to add this guy and this guy. And then we're going to do it, we're going to subtract them. So my positive root, when I do the adding between those, is going to be 0 0.135. When I do my negative root, when I subtract, I'm going to get negative 0 0.156. Remember what these represent. They represent concentrations. Can you have a negative concentration? Answer, no. No, you can't. And so that means you're going to keep this one. That's your correct answer for x. So you're always going to drop the negative one. All right, so we're going to keep x equals 0 0.135. All right, so we're close. Don't worry. We're past the hard part. Now what we want to do is actually our concentrations. Remember, the question asked 
What are the equilibrium concentrations of these guys? And that's where we're going to go back to our ice table and look at our equation. What we know is that for PCL5, for PCL5, our concentration is equal to 1 minus x. Well, we know our x now. So it's 1 minus 0 0.135, which is equal to 0 0.865 molar. And our PCL3 is equal to x, which is just equal to 0 0.135 molar. And same with our concentration of chlorine. It's equal to x, which is 0 0.135 molar. So these are equilibrium concentrations. So that was a lot of work, a lot of algebra, to get to a spot where we could figure out what the concentration was going to be of each of our reactants and products at equilibrium. That's the whole point of an ice table. We start with an initial concentration, we know it's going to undergo some change, and we can use the ice table to reduce our unknowns to just one variable. And that means we can solve for it, and that means we can figure out where our reaction is going to stop. If we put one molar PCL5 into a reaction vessel, it's going to run under these conditions until there's 0.865 as a concentration for PCL5, 0.135 as a concentration for PCL3, and 0.135 for the concentration of chlorine. All right, I hope you stuck with me to this point. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please ask any questions you have below.